Welcome back guys, it's your boy The Ace and today we're going to be diving into the world of network forensics using Wireshark. Now today we're going to focus on voice communications via RTP. Now whether you're a seasoned network vet or an engineer curious about network analysis, we need to look under the hood of this bad boy and see exactly what is happening. So remember, power of knowledge comes with responsibility, so ensure any shit you're working on belongs to you and the communication you're analysing is definitely open source. So buckle up, turn up those speakers and let's, let's go. go. Now first off, capturing the right data here is crucial, especially when it comes to RTP. Now whether you're on a mission to diagnose the network issues or validate voice quality on a network, the capture process lays the foundation of what you need to do here. Now, we'll explore strategies on intercepting RTP streams, emphasizing that you are authorized to do so in said scenarios. Now, tools like Wireshark or TCP Dump are your best allies here, but choosing the right vantage point, be it a PC, a router, or a session border controller or SBC from now on, makes all the difference. Now the process of intercepting RTP streams can expose vulnerabilities within a network at its core. Now this can be either encryption that is of a weak standard or inadequate access controls and so much more. Now attacks such as man in middle where for example the ace would position himself between the communication parties and in doing so can intercept, modify and relay any messages is one way. Sniffing attacks is another which involves capturing packets as they traverse over the network. This is particularly useful on unencrypted data which in some scenarios network admins or poor infrastructure still exist. Session hijacking is another. Now this attack takes control of the session between two entities so by hijacking one session an attacker can assume the identity of one party while gaining authorization of information as it streams to another. Spoofing attacks is a classic one also. This involves when, say, if I impersonate a device that is trusted on a network using, say, an ARP attack or ARP spoofing, and then this deceives other devices on the network thinking I'm a trusted device to send me all the data that they not, might not want me to see. Registration attacks is quite a new one for me. Now, this involves an attacker taking control of SIP registration processes. This allows said attacker to receive calls and messages to intended for someone else completely, intercepting or possibly redirecting communication streams. And the last one, which has a small caveat, is the RTP injection. Now, and this involves injecting malicious RTP packets into an ongoing stream. Now, this in itself isn't just one method, but can be used in conjunction with others for eavesdropping purposes. Overall, all of these attacks expose either a weakness on a network or encryption in voice data, insecure network endpoints, and in a larger, weak access control. Understanding RTP and SIP. RTP carries voice payloads while SIP takes charge of the call cell. But there's more than meets the eye here. The interaction between these protocols, especially in complex network environments involving say NAT or SBCs, can make or break your analysis. Now grasping these interactions is key to pinpointing where to capture the data and what exactly you are looking for in what could be thousands of streams. Now welcome to the lab session. Now first up we have the pieces of the puzzle in place with a SIP traffic capture so straight from the vulnerable and open source archives over at Wireshark, link in the description below. Now, this isn't your average capture. It's a treasure trove, in my perspective, of not only SIP, but RTP, which is real-time transport protocol packets. Now, it's mixed with a sprinkle of SNMP and other protocol chatter, which we can ignore for the most part. But our mission is here to isolate and analyze voice conversations buried within these streams. So if we head over to SIP and RTP, and then here you can see many, many examples. And I do urge you to go through all of these examples and do your own testing. But for this one, we shall just take the first sample of the SIP and RTP. 
and we download that bad boy right now. Now we can see here sitting on desktop. Now to initialize the SIP capture we just downloaded, first we would just pipe this with Wireshark in terminal and just fire it, which should initialize Wireshark for us. Now we have Wireshark to hand. Now kicking things off, we can navigate to telephony right here at the top, and then we can go to RTP. Now we hit RTP, we can analyze RTP streams, which from this filter, we'll uncover it within the packet we just downloaded. Now, this window unveils all the RTP streams in the capture. Now, you can see this as the lifeblood of the voice conversation throughout the stream. Now, remember, each conversation is a two-way street, comprising of separate streams for each direction. Our job is to pair these estranged streams back together. Now, first off, we can see there's multiple columns here, each column pertaining to different information on the stream. Now, we have the source address, the source port, the destination address, destination port, the SSRC, start time, duration, payload, packets, loss, etc. Now, even just using deductive reasoning, you can see here we have a source port and a destination port. And also, you can marry this up with a duration of a call. Now, a source port in this instance will be initializer, for example. And now, we can see a source port is sending some sort of data to a destination port of 8000. And on the flip of that, we can see 8000 is sending some sort of information back to the source port 403076. Now, for me, just looking at this, these two make sense in terms of some sort of stream that's back and forth. Symmetry is kind of what you're looking for here. Symmetry in action uh, once you identify this, it's simply hitting the play stream button right here, which will fuse the two in some respects to enable some playback revelation. So let's do that now. And there we have it. We have context in left and right. So we have streams from one channel to another. But what you will see here is that Wireshark begins a symphony intertwining not only the forward and reverse streams in a coherent conversation for you, which is handy, say the least. But when you hit play, the once silent packet erupts into a conversation unveiling not only what was in the SIP communication right before our ears, but what's happening during that period of time. So if we hit play, you can actually hear what's going on here. Colota. Por el Atlas, obviamente. Oh, no, si sí te escucho bien. Ah, ya ves, eso sí se escuchó. <laughs> All right, now we see two colleagues of the Indian persuasion, it seems, uh, having a good time on a call there. But nevertheless, the point in principle is that we've captured the stream, unwrapped the stream, and it's here for us to see. Conclusion. Now that wraps up our small but very insightful journey using Wireshark from decoding raw packets and unveiling the secrets of coherent conversation through a network. Now, today's exploration into VoIP communications and RTP stream interception opens up the broader discussion of network and security in digital communication, especially over data networks. Now, traditional mobile calls using GSM CDMA or LTE might seem out of reach for these types of attacks. However, with other sophisticated techniques lying in wait, that's not too far a stretch. Now you have IMSI catchers or stingrays. Now these are digital decoys that lure mobile phones by masquerading into cell towers, a technique that I will explore and try to pull off. You also have SS7 vulnerabilities. Now, this is the backbone of global communications. The SS7 network isn't without an Achilles heel. If some hacking group or said such could intercept its weaknesses, you would have the ability to track text any mobile phone in the world, potentially. Um, you also have network operator access. Again, while it's not work of external attackers, 
It's a reminder of the powers that be. Mobile operators have a key eye in the kingdom of mobile telecommunication. Now, again, they are also susceptible and I'm sure a major breach can happen at any time. So kind of what's the moral of the story here? Whether it's through wire on the air, our conversations are always at risk of being intercepted, really. Staying informed, vigilant and proactive in securing your comms, it's the best defence in an ever-evolving digital landscape. Now, I'll be excited to dive into the comments and hear your thoughts, experiences and questions on this and let's keep the combo going, definitely. But until next time, stay safe in the cyberspace, hit the smash and subscribe button and peace out.